Hello and welcome to a Stuart 7A model steam plant part 15, fitting the new eccentric and setting the slide valve timing. At the moment I'm cleaning up the part that I've just made, the separate eccentric, and I'm using a piece of 400 grit wet to dry sandpaper and a small amount of lubricating oil. In this clip I'm filing a notch in the edge. This is where I'm going to drill and thread a hole for a grub screw. It's worth mentioning that I filed the notch in a position that's the furthest away from the crankshaft hole. First of all, as always, I use the centre drill followed by a twist drill. This is tapping size for 5BA. And just for the viewer from Germany that made it quite clear that he did not like imperial measurements, the tapping size drill that I used was 2.6mm. I think it should be 265 but this is near enough. To make sure that the tap went into the hole at the perfect angle, I started it off in the drilling machine, then I removed it and used the tap wrench. I don't like to thread all the way through using the drill chuck because it's not sensitive enough. By doing it this way, between your fingers there's some shock absorption, and you're less likely to break the tap. And by using the drilling machine to start the tap off, it's definitely in the right place. Now I'm fitting a very long grub screw all the way down so there isn't much danger of the thread stripping as you tighten the grub screw onto the crankshaft. That's the inner eccentric ready, and now it's time to clean up the outer eccentric. Why is it this colour? Because I heated it with my blowtorch to red heat, just in case it was silver soldered together. But no such luck, it was all made from one piece, so I machined away the bit I didn't need. And in this clip I'm cleaning up the outer eccentric sheave using a piece of scotch Bright. I drilled out the oil hole on the inner eccentric strap. I also drilled it out in the outer eccentric strap to make it match, but the reason for drilling it out on the inner eccentric strap was so I could tighten the grub screw using an allen key through the oil hole. This clip is where the reassembly starts, first of all by tightening the bolts that hold the eccentric straps to the sheaves, the first one being used for the eccentric sheave that I made, followed by full assembly of both the eccentric straps and sheaves, connecting them to the expansion link. And after tightening the final pin in place, I'm ready to give it a test run. And here, as usual, I'm starting off by setting the eccentric position so that the highest point of the eccentric is at 90 degrees to the crank web. This is not always the perfect position, but it's a good starting point. Once I make the other small parts to lock the reversing gear in place, I will tweak the setting until I get it perfect. Time for the first test. Don't worry about everything wobbling about, this is of no consequence. It will not wobble about when it's all held in place. And as you can clearly see the engine runs extremely well with the valve gear in this position. And when I slide the expansion link across to the other side, it also runs backwards. That's a first. Here is the question. What was the problem and why wouldn't the engine run in both directions before? I checked every part of the valve gear against the drawing, including the double eccentric. Here I'm just having a feel at the valve timing to make sure it is early admission. It's not quite right yet, but more about that later. Either way, it runs very well. It runs really well, in fact. Notice the dirty black oil on the outer eccentric strap. This is the eccentric sheave that I heated up and it will be a while before the black oil disappears. But eventually the oil will run clear as the parts bed in. Let's try a bit of slow motion. The engine's tapping a bit but then the timing's not right, I think it's probably quite retarded. Once all the valve gear is secured, I will adjust the timing to perfection. When I built this new workbench, unlike the old one which was a very solid bench, the top of this bench is nothing more than some thick plywood, and the bench top acts as a soundboard amplifying any noise. Listen to the difference when I lift the engine off the bench. And by the way, the nut underneath it is not off the engine. It fell off one of the valve chest studs when I was refitting the valve chest cover. The engine really is running surprisingly well, and it throttles well too. And so it should really, because everything is made 100% to the drawing and very well made. Except for the machined together pair of eccentric sheaves that were 30 degrees out, that's 15 degrees at each side. They need to be at 120 degrees to each other. And why was that? 
because it was on the drawing. And the engineer who built this engine didn't question the drawing, he just got on with the job and built the reversing gear to the drawing. When I finish setting up the position of these eccentrics when I go into obsess mode, the engine will run beautifully, but they may not be exactly at 120 degrees to each other. I phoned my friend John Holroyd from the Steam Workshop. Now John is an engineer to die for. You wouldn't believe how good this chap is. And he reiterated my comments and said yes, he thought the drawing was wrong as well. And no, I wasn't cracking up after all. That's it for this episode. You now know the answer as to why the engine didn't go in reverse. So stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.